So why would you, as a mother, survivor of narcissistic abuse or toxic abuse, why would you want to become an entrepreneur? What is the reason that I'm focusing on this for my audience? There are so many advantages built in that I can't say enough about it. Yes, there are things that are tricky and difficult, but I know myself it's been almost 10 years since I left my relationship with my two very little kids. They're now 10 and 15, but I would not have made it through many of those years without the flexibility that being an entrepreneur afforded me. Did I struggle? Did I flounder? Did I have failures? Did I feel alone? Often, yes, all of the above, but I would have to say overall, I'm, I'm doing okay in the middle of some pretty tough stuff right now. And the reason why is because I made those choices. And so I'm going to just run through some of the reasons why I think this is important to consider if you are a survivor, especially if you are a parent, a mom survivor of narcissistic abuse. Number one, this gives you a sense of independence and control. If you were in a relationship being controlled, your livelihoods being controlled, your personality, your connection to other people, all of the things, your time. Now you are the boss of you. You are the boss of your future. You are the boss of what you're earning. You get to say what your schedule is, what your products are, your services are, what the name of your business is, the colors, all the things. What's the meaning? What's the mission behind it? And that is incredibly empowering because as we get out of these relationships, we need to build our confidence back up. We need to have something to believe in. We need to have something to get us out of bed in the morning that has purpose. And we're at the same time rebuilding both confidence and starting with a fresh new identity. And I can't say enough about what it was like for me to even just start my podcast, The Audacious Life, which was for survivors of narcissistic abuse. This is before all this narcissist stuff was really big. This was, gosh, it was like eight, nine years ago. 2014 is when I had the idea. So it's 10, almost 10 years since I had the idea. And that fueled me and made me get out of bed in the morning, gave me a purpose, it connected me to other people. So the other thing is that flexibility. I, in the beginning, had a regular nine to five job, three to four days a week, and I had kids, one in preschool, another one in, in elementary, and I had before and after school stuff. I had a lot to juggle, and also it was financially very difficult. Traveling back and forth, we moved, new school district, but I had this thing to focus on. So in the middle of all of that, and court and all that stuff, I had this one thing that meant so much to me and gave me the flexibility. Nobody was making me do my podcast or start a personal brand. It was just me. And I got excited. I got excited about the people that I talked to about it, the people that I pulled into to interview. And then later as I launched a business from the podcast and all the opportunities that came out of it, I got really excited about just the way people were perceiving me their suggestions for me and my business, whether they were a match for me or not, it, it it just was such an amazing thing to have people knocking at my door, emailing me, calling me, connecting with me on social media to potentially work with me or have me interview them or have them sponsor my podcast or whatever. And if I had not had that and I was doing just my nine to five, my life would have been much more empty and I would not have had the level of hope that I had. It gave me so much life. The thing is financial stability. So right out of the gate, was it financially feasible for me to do some of the things I did? Not really. It was really difficult. I've learned a ton and I'd like to share what I learned. Some of the things that I paid for, I now know are actually free resources and maybe they weren't even free back then, but they are now. And so I've learned so many shortcuts from not taking shortcuts, from doing things the long way. And so if you're listening and you've seen me on this channel before and you've heard me talk about podcasting, that is one way as a guest on highly targeted podcasts, you can talk about whatever the thing is you're going after. So if you start a business where you're selling t-shirts or maybe you're doing home organization or helping people sleep train their kids, or maybe you're just a whiz with like electronic organization or you're an incredible writer or whatever that thing is, you can start getting on podcasts as long as you have a really simple website Maybe you have a free PDF or a free 15 minute call that you give to people and you get to control your schedule on that 15 minute call. Like these things don't cost a lot of money, but they can help build your brand. They can help bring people to you without you trying to put flyers out or whatever, get the word out. And it's gotten so much easier. And the other piece of it is when you tell your story, 
When you speak about what you've accomplished in your life and what you're doing, that also builds confidence. So whether it's training, doing a video like this, talking on a podcast, blogging, writing, getting paid to write, getting paid to go speak in front of an audience in your town, maybe a local chamber of commerce, maybe it's a nonprofit somewhere, but those opportunities that will open up when you do this are going to give you more of a sense of confidence, self-esteem, and connection to other people. And that sense of community that you begin to build because you've got this thing that has nothing to do with necessarily your healing or your past or whatever. It's just, this is what I'm focused on. This is what I have to offer. This is what I'm building. This is the project. This is the purpose. Those things, oh, they can just give you so much and fuel you and get you out of bed every day. Even on your darkest moments, it becomes your why. And then obviously if you have children, you're building a legacy for those kids and you're showing them that you have value as a person in this world, as a woman in this world, and they can do the same thing. So that's really super powerful. So it's a beautiful thing to be able to do this for your kids. My daughter was just walking in and that's why I got quiet. But really, this is something I have friends who remind me of. They're like, your daughters are going to notice the hard work you put in, the way that in the midst of all this chaos and stuff that was created around you, all of the turmoil, all of the things that you've been through, all of the hard times, sticking to one thing, even though maybe I can't do it consistently all the time. I still have never given up. I've never given up. And the reason I haven't given up is I believe in myself. I believe in the results that I've seen for all of the goodness that it brings to us, to our family, to me personally, to the other people around me. And so I'm coming up with new things that I can do. But ultimately, I believe that it really is one of the best things in terms of personal growth financial stability, emotional stability, building your self-confidence, building your identity, building a community and connection to other people where there is this common bond. There's nothing else really like it. I mean, really, really hard to meet people nowadays. So think about it. If you have a business and you have a whatever the thing is you're selling, it's already a door opener. So it's a way to talk to somebody who has a like-minded affinity for that thing, that topic, whatever it is you're selling. And it gives you confidence if you have a business card or you have a website you're going to show or you just posted something that's really cool or you met somebody you can say, hey, yeah, I'll follow you if you follow me. And then they can start to see that you have things that you're selling, right? So there's a very positive handshake, hello, door opener aspect to this. And again, it can create a really positive sense of community. Now, it really does depend on what your topic is, right? So my topic for my first business and for my podcast related mostly to until I switched to digital and social media, it's all around healing from emotional abuse, which is not the lightest topic, but it did still create conversations and it still got me a lot of attention at the time a lot of I was invited to do things a lot of them I had to say no to speaking at events showing up and being the expert podcaster at a big podcasting event business stuff locally speaking on stages locally all that stuff and I at some point made myself smaller because of the other person in my life you can pick something that's not as scary and if you're selling t-shirts that's not as intimidating to your ex and not as instigating. I don't know, find something happy, hopefully. Find something that lights you up. Find something that makes you feel creative and gives you joy. And I'm not saying it's not gonna be hard. I'm not saying that it's not gonna maybe bug them. It probably will, because anytime you get happy, it bugs them. And honestly, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's like, I'd rather have them be bugged by your happiness than by have them be happy about your sorrow. So those are all of the reasons why I feel like this is a really important thing to talk about. And the financial piece, I think that having something that's open-ended, yes, you can have a nine to five. And if you're doing really well in your nine to five and you don't have time for something else and you have no motivation for it, because you love what you do and you love the all of the things I just mentioned maybe that are already there, then that's great. But a lot of women don't. A lot of women are coming out of financial abuse, control, all these things. They've been made really small. They don't even have a career to speak of. They did before and now they feel like... There's nothing. So this is a way to start again. It's a way to start fresh. And if you just started at some 
random job you needed that you're not really invested in and you want to be excited and you want to feel the passion and you want to grow a career and you want to grow your income, why not start something as a side business and try to create another stream of income that excites you to see, you know, maybe you're getting sleep money while you sleep. Somebody's buying all your stuff on some online shop or you're selling stuff at flea markets because you've made things. I don't know whatever. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is that it can really build you up. It can show your children that you're extremely resourceful, you and your kids and the people around you. And then there's just so much that can grow when you start building your income too. You can start doing something with that money. You can save it. You can invest it. You can do so many things with it. You can reinvest it in your business and grow even more. You can hire somebody to help you with your business, right? So there's a lot here. This is why I've been talking about it. At first, I was like, oh, these are two different things. I've got people healing from narcissistic abuse, and then I've got this mompreneur thing. But really, I think the two go hand in hand. And I think that this mom business side thing can be one of many modalities that can help you heal, recover, survive, and thrive. And so that's why I want to share all this with you. What do you want to know about if you're thinking about starting a business? Let's build this thing together. Anything related to visibility online that is near and dear to my heart. I'm starting to do more with SEO, blogging, thinking about having you, if you're a survivor and you want to share your story on the podcast, that's one thing, but maybe you want to share it in writing. I'd love to build out the blog on the audacious life and the audacious mamas podcasts. I think that would be amazing. So if you're a writer, you want to share your story anonymously or otherwise, or a pen name, please do reach out to me and yeah, let's work together. Let's build this thing together. All right. Lots of love to you and be strong. Please keep reaching for your dreams. Do not let other people destabilize you or bring you down and tell you that you're less than. You're amazing. There's so much more ahead for you and you got this. Whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. So thank you for being here. Please subscribe if you like this. Please share with friends and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.